TikTok. How can you grow there as a gaming content creator? Is it just silly music videos and garbage and gamers have no opportunity? Well, today we've got a gaming content creator. His name's Mr. Kasla. He has gone from 4,000 followers on TikTok to 32,000 followers on TikTok in two freaking weeks. Gaming content only. Over 300,000 likes and millions of views on TikTok in a matter of just a couple months for freaking free. Mr. Castle is on the <laughs> podcast today. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you guys doing? We're doing great, man. We're glad to have you here. I've referenced you as like this uh, anonymous creator in the past on the podcast that has like struggled to grow, but then went on TikTok and then has grown a, a, an exponential amount. I can't wait to dive into the very specific details on how to succeed on TikTok, you know, what type of content to post, tips that you have for other creators, how to cross promote, et cetera, et cetera. I can't wait to dive in there with you, man. Yeah, I can't wait either. It's going to be an honorary experience. I've listened to you guys since you uh, started in the beginning, so I'm excited. Aww. <laughs> All right, you're listening to The Digital Drop, of course, the number one podcast for gaming creators, where we help you make gaming content full-time. My name is Andrew <laughs> Wall, and I'm joined, as always, by Andrew Perrin. I'm back. I'm interested to learn more about TikTok. We've been looking at this for the past couple of weeks. It's a new opportunity for organic growth. This doesn't come by very often, but every time it does, we always jump on top of it, and we're, like, all about it for a while. So I'm really interested to, uh, to listen to... Mr. Castle here, and I'm welcome to the show. Ross, A, Dylan, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic. Ready to do some learning today. This is one of those topics that's really fun because I admittedly don't know a whole lot about it. And to hear someone who grew organically and is doing this like right in front of our eyes, this is really exciting. And I think a huge opportunity for gaming creators. It really is. And before we get into all those TikTok secrets, we want to thank... Rode Microphones for sponsoring the Digital Drop podcast. All of the vocals, except for Mr. Castle's vocals, sorry, are <laughs> Rode Microphones. <laughs> Maybe one day he can be sponsored by Rode. Rode, if you're listening. One uh, day. <laughs> one day. This sound is the raw sound of the Rode Procaster mic and Rodecaster mixers with onboard processing turnout turned on. If you think we sound good, check us out, propodcastinggear.com. It's our free, no strings attached guide that contains our recommended audio equipment. We've got an embedded version on the site now where you don't even have to download it. You can just click around on the guide and check out the gear we're using. We're not gonna collect your email, your credit card, no marketing BS, just great gear recommendations of stuff we actually love, we actually use. Go to our site, propodcastinggear.com, and check out that audio equipment guide right now. The better you sound, the more views and more subscribers and more money you're going to make in the long run. It's an investment in your future. Do it. Thank you, Road. Back to the topic at hand. TikTok is blowing the hell up. It's the number one most downloaded app for like a year now on iOS. And now creators are blowing up on that platform. Mr. Castle is one of them. Mr. Castle, why did you start talking to your computer in a dark room, recording it, and then posting it on the internet in the first place? Well, I'd be lying to you, AWOL, if I didn't say I had a unhealthy obsession with video games and uh, <laughs> having a full-time <laughs> job that doesn't always work out the best. And uh, I was like, you know what? I need to turn this addiction into something positive. So why not try my hand at YouTube and, you know, Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, TikTok? And now I've actually seen some success. So it's like, you know, I started my YouTube back in 2014 and... I had some success back when SEO was, you know, the main driver in videos, and now it's, you know, all about watch time. Um, but now I found success in TikTok, and I'm just gonna stick to that <laughs> until, I, you know, I could get my YouTube and everything else, you know, to grow from that. We've talked before about how you struggled in the earlier stages with your channel, and that's why you ended up contacting me a bit ago. You're like, how the hell can I make some Fortnite content and do live streaming <laughs> and actually grow, right? And so we right. talked about a lot of different strategies and trying different video series on YouTube and Twitch and trying Mixer. What was your experience like on non TikTok platforms and what were your biggest challenges on those other platforms? Uh, I think consistency uh, is like probably the biggest one and that goes hand in hand with discoverability. Um, you know, I love Fortnite and I just love BRs in general. 
So, and I'm kind of stubborn, you know, I'd like to play other games and grow, which I know I could go on Mixer right now and probably stream, you know, like a Dundertale or something that someone isn't streaming and get more views, but I just don't enjoy that as much. So, um, it's just really hard for discoverability and whatnot. And then when you're trying to be consistent, um, with certain video topics, they don't get much traction. It kind of, you know, is a nail in the coffin for you and you, you know, you you don't post as much YouTube content. Out of those platforms, YouTube and the different live streaming platforms like Twitch and Mixer and what have you, which ones did you feel were the most difficult to grow on right now as a gaming content creator with a small audience, like hundreds of followers? Uh, which one was the toughest and why? Twitch, 100%, because I, I think now they have a little bit more of an algorithm, so you, they're pushing you know smaller creators, especially with all the people leaving Twitch. But for me, like, I just remember sitting there for hours with zero to, you know, maybe a couple of viewers. And there's just no point to stream, you know, for eight hours a day with that many viewers. It just doesn't make any sense. That makes sense. So you struggled for a bit. You were getting on and off traction, trying to figure out your voice and what content you were going to post. Then in June, you said you started experimenting with TikTok. What, why did you start posting on TikTok? Did, was it because you were listening to Gary Vee or you're listening to the digital <laughs> drop or something that got you into it? Like, what got well, you on TikTok, the, dude? The, the digital drop kind of, because you guys always saw little tidbits, you know, like, oh yeah, TikTok. And I was like, huh. And I, I didn't listen, start listening to Gary Vee until like a month ago. And I, you know, that kind of made me feel good because, you know, I started posting a little more TikTok at that point. But I wanted to do uh, something new, and I saw a lot of TikTok videos on uh, YouTube, like those TikTok compilations, and they're getting like millions of views. So I, I went and checked it out, and I noticed that there was Fortnite content, and a lot of the content wasn't very good. It's like kids, you know, filming from their phones. And I, and I saw this one channel, uh, this guy named Sushi Bay Gaming. I think it's just Sushi Bay, but he had like... I don't know, like 600,000 and all his videos were good quality, but they weren't like the best, you know, type of content. And I already had a few, you know, like little skits of Fortnite on my channel. So when I saw, oh, I could upload a, you know, 15 to 30 second clip, this is perfect for me. So like I already kind of been pa kind of practicing on these type of Fortnite videos I would make. And once I started posting on TikTok, you know, after like my 10th video, I had like 300,000 views on one of my videos. So I what? knew this had to be something good. That's yeah. crazy. I, I went to sleep Jeez. and I woke up and it was just 300,000. I was starting to freak out. <laughs> All right, we got to wow. dive into that. All right, let's do this. I'm really going to put you under the light here. And I want to ask you a question, something that we haven't really talked about before. But I know you said, you know, going through Twitch, it just wasn't worth it, you know, to put all those hours into it for uh, such little reward. From a mental standpoint, when you go from the bottom, how do you motivate yourself to all of a sudden stick to something like TikTok, something that's brand new when you haven't had success elsewhere? I don't know if it has to do with anything, how I was raised and whatnot, but I've had some life experiences that haven't been the easiest. So um, getting through those, it kind of made me realize, you know, I can do this regardless of how many years or months it takes. Um, so I just, you know, kind of keep pushing forward and I just try to stay positive, but, uh, um, I guess I'm just stubborn, <laughs> but I, I think it just, uh, it's just positivity can go a long way. Just knowing that you have something that's worth something, regardless if no one's, you know, uh, watching it. I know I'm a very creative person. So to see that finally blow up on TikTok is very reassuring. Um, and it's only going to help me in the future for like YouTube and whatnot going down the, uh, the road, especially because the, the videos are only, you know, around 11 to 15 seconds long. Um, that's almost like training to make YouTube videos technically. So, I mean, you could start with TikTok, then go to YouTube, you know, make a brand new YouTube channel, then start streaming. I think that'd be like kind of the perfect way to go, honestly. Okay. So you've had the perseverance, you've had the life experience that's made you stick with it and just kind of push through getting little results till finally you found something that's blowing up for you. That's amazing. So now that you're posting on TikTok, what benefits are you actually getting from it other than likes? Like, are you seeing any sort of real <laughs> benefits? Do you feel like you're actually growing your influence as a gaming creator? Tell us about the real benefits that you're feeling here from TikTok so far. 
Well, uh, two things. I've noticed growth on uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram. Um, and on YouTube, I've gotten probably over 100 subscribers. And I haven't been really active on my YouTube for the last, like, month. So, I mean, that's 100 free subscribers for nothing. And now imagine if I start posting content. And let's say you post a video and you have those TikTok followers that subscribe to you. Um, start watching that it would only boost you know my video in the algorithm because of watch time and th they always say on YouTube videos the first 24 hours of that video's life is the most important because that way it knows to you know to recommend it to you know other viewers or um, suggested videos etc so that's awesome it so seeing that boost in YouTube subscribers is huge so obviously some cross promotion works there we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that later but how about on the live streaming side? I know live streaming's been a big part of your history as a gaming content creator. You like playing Fortnite. You're pretty darn good at it. And you like to <laughs> dance while you're playing. So have you seen an impact on your live streaming numbers or people that are just willing to actually show up when you go live? I've only went, I think, live once. And I did have a, a little bit more viewers. So that one I'm going to have to get back to later on. But I will tell you this, live on TikTok is actually, can be financially beneficial. Um, all the time I see people I follow, uh, fo uh, if, I, if, you, if you follow me, here's a drama queen or something like that. So they have these little gifts on there, like a drama queen, a panda. I forget all the different gifts you can give people, but I think the drama queen is worth like, I think 50 to to $100. So the way sh live streaming works on TikTok is it, someone donates to you, TikTok gets 50% of that donation. That's and a savage I, cut. Holy crap, yeah, that's wow. a savage yeah. cut. <clears throat> but, I mean, you're getting money regardless. Like, for example, I asked this kid, I don't know how truthful he was, because I've asked several other people, and they made it sound like they weren't making as much, but maybe he goes live more. But I asked him, since he started TikTok, how much he's made, and he said in about three to five months, he's made about $5,000. And this kid's only like 16 years old, and I see him go live all the time. But he had, I think, two or 300,000 followers. So basically, people on there are just selling a shout-out. People ask, can I get a shout-out? Can I get a shout-out? Please shout me out. It's I'm not going to lie, it's kind of annoying. But uh, <laughs> people legit sell shout-outs or make a video of like the trendy like videos people post on TikTok. And they'll post that person's account on there and... When you already established on TikTok, you're pretty much guaranteed views. Like I'll post, you know, kind of nothing burger videos and I'll get at least a thousand, you know, now since I'm up to 32,000, you know, followers. So it's, it's almost like a snowball effect. Once you have, you know, two or three videos, like almost to a million views, you're, you're going to get free views and likes. free views. Like, the, I mean, there's no other platform where you can just upload from scratch or from a small account and really grow. I mean, your story that you were telling me on the AWOL digital discord, where you were telling best practices and you're like, Hey guys, I kind of grew this much. I was like, what? So then <laughs> I went ahead and I, I called up Ross and Perrin and I talked to them and I had a serious sit down conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, guys, we need to start taking TikTok seriously. Mr. Kasla is blowing up over there. Uh, it's not just, you know, chatter uh, amongst the marketing gurus and growth gurus, like this is real. And so I posted a handful of not great content on TikTok, just me talking to my phone, giving people advice, which is not the type of content people want on TikTok. Uh, my first three videos with zero followers and no promotion, I got a thousand views. With, with, I'm, a, I'm a 35 year old man giving advice into my phone with no music in the background, and I got a thousand views on TikTok from scratch. So this free reach, this organic reach, this non-paid reach that Mr. Castle is talking about is very real. And if you're able to actually make content that's tailored to the platform itself, obviously you can grow a lot. Let me follow up with you on the live side of things. Are you aware of the requirements to be able to go live on TikTok and to make revenue? What are the limitations there? Can you give us a little bit more detail for the live streamers and just hanging out or IRL streamers in particular that may benefit from this? I think you can go as live as you want, as much as you want, but you have to have at least a thousand followers, which in my mind is very doable if you just post consistently. 
Um, for example, I had a video that blew up for you know 300,000 views. I just posted like four videos a day, and uh, I saw those views skyrocket to a million. So consistency there, but the live streaming part, um, a thousand followers, you um, can go as live as much as you want, and you can actually put in your live streaming title, I will sell shout outs, etc. Or you know, it doesn't have to be exactly worded that way, but it says, you know, shout outs equal drama queen, etc. So um, other than that, for the live streaming part, um, not really much else I really know. I just, I, I like to go into other live streamers' uh, lives, and uh, it's kind of awkward. Some of them just sit there, and uh, they just ask, hey, I'll, don't don't forget, I'll give you a shout-out for a drama queen. It's kind of like, man, it's like <laughs> we're hustling here, <laughs> you know? So I, I don't know. However you want to do that, some people not, might not think it is a, as a genuine thing, but I, I see it all the time. Um, when I went live, I was pretty entertained. I've only went live twice, once at 4,000 followers and uh, another time at 22,000. And I got like two donations for 50 cents, but you know, I was just being entertaining and I was like, Hey, you can donate if you want to, you know, etc. Got it. Yeah. You're trying to do entertainment first, ask for money later, which makes sense. Um, yeah. Just asking people for money being the actual content itself sounds pretty dumb, but if you have enough followers, there will be people that will do that. Now you talked about this a little bit earlier and I want to dive even more into it. How can a gaming content creator effectively cross promote to and from TikTok? Uh, it's pretty easy because TikTok has a built-in feature on your profile page where you can connect your YouTube and your Instagram to it. So if people know how to use TikTok, you know, and it depends on their you know level of use, uh, they already know to click on that little YouTube icon next to your name, and then you have the choice depending on if they have their Instagram and YouTube um, uh, connected to TikTok. You can just click on that, and if you have it on your phone. It just takes you straight to YouTube into their channel. Um, but I see all the time uh, people that are pretty established. Uh, I think there's this one guy, he's called uh, Molly VR, and he uh, posts like a little tagline at the end of like an animated YouTube button, and it says his uh, YouTube channel. And I checked his YouTube, and he has, I think, 100,000 plus subscribers. So he's. He's pretty big time, I would say, in terms of the views on TikTok and his YouTube starting to get a lot of traction because of it. Like his TikTok, I think he has like four or five million views or uh, f followers. So um, that's that's pretty much the, the easiest way is just promote it at the end of your video. Hey, go to my page, go to my Instagram. Uh, you can even do uh, engagement videos. So if you already have the views, like, hey, uh, go to my Twitter, you know, and type in this hashtag or my Instagram or, you know, let's do, let's do a contest. Uh, do you like this better than, you know, do you like a better than B, etc. You know, you can do all sorts of engagement stuff on TikTok, which I've seen a lot of success with in my videos. So TikTok being uh, kind of a front is like a promotional asset for, for creators, for maybe your other assets seems, seems like a very realistic choice. There's also some revenue opportunity I want to talk technicals for a second because I noticed something very interesting that I've, uh, and very surprising when kind of going over your TikTok strategy. And I noticed that you're doing gaming content and you're doing horizontal video. And I had first looked at, uh, you know, TikTok as any old person would and looked at it as, oh, it's vertical format. So let's, let's utilize, you know, the format in which uh, TikTok's platform is keyed to. So I've been looking at gearing TikTok strategy as, Let's do vertical video. But you've just shoved in uh, horizontal, normal, like gaming type content, and it's worked extremely well. Have you noticed any sort of difference in, in either type, or does it even matter? On that, I don't think it really matters because there's other people basically doing what I'm doing, is which they're just editing, you know, a little video uh, in their editor, and then they're, I would assume, Dropbox or, you know, getting it to their phone somehow. And then they're just downloading it on their phone and then uploading it to TikTok. So in terms of the vertical versus horizontal, I don't really see uh, there being like an algorithmic uh, boost in that at all. 
yeah, I know, I, that was a surprising thing. And so I want to also see uh, if you have like maybe, because we could go like really dive deep into strategy and like technical stuff. Oh, like yeah. What the copy is. But maybe if you have like top three kind of strategic elements that work for you, like um, things like how are you doing social copy? How are you doing hashtags uh, to make it successful? Like what's your, how many posts are you doing to find you get enough, you know, growth and reception, stuff like that. Do you have like any like top three that you would recommend? I would say, uh, my number one would be post, uh, around 11 to 15 second long videos. Um, I used to do like 15 to 30 second long and there are some people that are successful. You can post up to a minute long video, but I'd say 11 to 15 seconds just because, um, from the research I've done, that's kind of their target demographic of time you want to use um and also if you look at the songs you can use on tiktok's platform uh most of them are 11 to 15 seconds long um so it only makes sense you know if they're catering all this you know these songs to be that long i would think that would be the kind of the, the target time you want to hit uh for the second uh tip i would say is use only about three hashtags starting out um and one of the best hashtags you can use, which some of you may know this, but it's the hashtag for you. So when you get into TikTok and if you're not creating content, you're just kind of browsing. Uh, it's like basically your homepage. It says for you at the top. So for some reason, this hashtag is able to help you get to people's homepage or their for you page a lot easier. And I've had a lot of success uh, using it. Now there's multiple ways you can do for you. You can do hashtag, you know, the word actually for and you together, or you could do FYP, which means for you, your page, uh, for you page. And then you can type out uh, the whole thing for you page. So there's multiple ways you can do that. I would just say play around with it, but I would for sure try using that hashtag and then a gaming hashtag. So if you're doing gaming content, uh, you know, hashtag Fortnite or hashtag uh, Modern Warfare. And then the last hashtag can be kind of like what the video was about. So, for example, I had the big the video I have the most views on, I did hashtag for you, hashtag Fortnite, and hashtag um, noob because the video was about noobs. And that video has, you know, over a million views now. And I, all I do is I, I try to put a little description in there with an emoji in there. But honestly, like once... You, you know, you, you've got a few videos with like a little description, three hashtags. <clears throat> From the research I've done, they say three hashtags. You can kind of play around with it. I've seen people do no hashtags or they'll spam hashtags. So I would say play around with it, but I think there is a thing called channel authority. So if you have certain types of hashtags that you use different than a lot of other creators, for example, that Molly VR guy, he uses hashtag VR, hashtag Moly VR. Uh, so he basically created his own hashtag. So those are basically all things that can drive his views because he's pretty much got a dominance on those hashtags. Um, and then the last tip I would say is use the music on TikTok's platform. You can make original content, but I'd say uh, use the 11 to 15 second content on there. Um, so you may have to like, you know, put the audio in your like edited clip and then remove it and then upload it to TikTok and then go through their little music feature when you upload a video and then put it in there to make sure it syncs up correctly. Because I found a lot of success using that type of uh, system to use their their music because TikTok, one thing they encourage is reusing other music or sounds or audio other people use. That's like one of their big encouragers. It makes me wonder um, if that's like part of their algorithm It's using that feature. So it would be really interesting to dive down into that, like more kind of in the future and, and identify what spe how specifically the TikTok algorithm works, right? Because this is something we hit on this podcast a lot. When we look at when we look at a new platform or we're reevaluating existing ones, we look at, you know, algorithms specifically, what are those functions and actions you can do? So those tips are great. That's like pretty much exactly what I wanted to know. And I've already learned uh, a lot about how to shape a strategy, a TikTok strategy, just from like that answer that you just gave us. A big side note too is just consistency. So if you have a video that does blow up, I would post as much as you can. 
because you're going to get a lot of views on those videos and one of those videos might blow up because once that video blows up it's like a snowball effect like you're going to just keep growing like no matter like almost no matter what and if you have good or bad content it's going to get views this is amazing information i hope all of you guys are paying attention all gaming creators realizing that tiktok is an opportunity for gaming content creators to grow it's an opportunity for people of any age to grow as well. I'm seeing a lot of creators on TikTok that are like 30 plus now breaking into the platform and releasing content that's not necessarily like the silly dancing madness that may be on the front page of TikTok and getting a lot of traction doing it. And the TikTok boat, I mean, how long do you think people can hop on this boat before it starts to dry up, Mr. Kasla? I mean, you know, organic only stays around for a certain period of time and then eventually it goes away once basically supply exceeds demand. Now, obviously demand is way higher than supply right now, which is why guys like you in the last two weeks can go from 4,000 followers to over 30,000, you know, by posting some good Fortnite content. When do you think this ship will hit the sunset and be gone and you'll have to pay for traction? I honestly don't know. So I think the opportunity is now, obviously. Um, Vine and uh, Musical.ly, which came just before TikTok, you know, up and died. So it could be tomorrow. It could be a year from now. I think TikTok probably has a better system uh, than what Vine and Musical.ly had implemented because when people go live, they get 50% of that revenue. So I think that's kind of would be a driving factor in, term, in terms of its survivability, but uh, it could be any time. There you go. So the opportunity is now jump on it. Well, look, if people want to check you out right now, where can listeners go check out your strategy Check you out on TikTok and other avenues. Where can they go to see what you're doing to blow up from nothing to, let's just say it, international TikTok superstar. Let's just say, <laughs> let's say it. Right Hopefully one day, but uh, you guys can find me at uh, Miss the Castle, M-I-S-T-A-C-A-S-S-L-A on TikTok, or you can find me um, on Instagram at Miss the, at Miss the Castle, same uh, type of wording. And uh, YouTube, it's just going to be Mr. Kasla, but a space between Mr. and Kasla. Got it. So one more time with the TikTok handle. It's going to be at Mr. Kasla, M-I-S-T-A-C-A-S-S-L-A. Go there right now, creators. Look at what this man's doing. Check out his hashtag strategy. See the post frequency and just watch him grow. I pull up his profile once a day. There's another thousand or two followers just showing up on his profile every <laughs> single day, man. It's crazy to watch you blow up. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's nice to look at my notifications. It's like, oh yeah, you got a thousand followers and 400 new comments and it's pretty insane. <laughs> this is what we're always talking about. Spend 80% of your time on your main platform, 20% experimenting with new ones, and maybe you can find your TikTok creators that are listening right now and you can be a super celebrity billionaire like Mr. Kasla. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hopefully one day. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show, man. And thank you, hey, thanks listeners. Thanks for having me. And thank you, listeners, so much for listening to the Digital Drop Podcast. We encourage you to subscribe on the podcasting platform of your choice so you don't miss our weekly episodes. We also have opened up dedicated YouTube channels to the Digital Drop Podcast. So we have full episodes on one of our channels and also highlight clips on the other. Just search Digital Drop Podcast on YouTube. They will pop up for you. So you'll only get this content, nothing else. And if one nugget of information that Mr. Castle shared helped you at all, subscribe to the podcast. I hope it changes your trajectory and your career. I hope it's that one thing you needed to know that maybe pushes you over the edge. Go get it, be consistent, and good luck, creators.